My name is Candice, aka Picasso Baby, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own Pinot in Paradise. new here welcome if you've been here before thank you so much for stopping back by to paint with me today um so y'all it has been a while i have not seen you all since the very beginning of summer and it's already officially fall i've missed you all so much has happened so i'm going to be filling you in and updating you on my life in this tutorial but we're also going to be creating something super fun and super simple we're going to be making pinot in paradise um so as always before we get started make sure that you like comment and subscribe and turn on those post notifications so that you do not miss the next tutorial so before we get started, I am going to go over everything that you need today to do your Pinot in Paradise painting. So as always, I am working with a 16 by 20 inch canvas. You can use the canvas size of your choice. It's completely up to you. And today we are going to be doing a little bit of drawing. So you do want to make sure that you have a piece of chalk. You also want to make sure that you have some different size acrylic paint brushes, some napkins to dry them off on. You want to make sure that you have a water cup to wash your brushes in and make sure you get cool water. And then also make sure you got yourself some paint. So today I am working with the colors bright red, um, chrome yellow, titanium white, Mars black, and phthalo blue. And also everything that I'm using today in this painting tutorial is listed down in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be doing to get the background filled in, we're going to be creating a sunset. Um, since I didn't get to do a whole lot of painting with you all this summer, I wanted to just go ahead and get at least one more done before we get into the fall paintings. And this is just also something fun that you can do any time of the year, especially when it gets cold and you're missing that tropical weather or you just want to do something fun and simple with a glass of wine to relax. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the background first. So I am using a bigger brush to do my background, a bigger flat brush, and I want to create a sunset. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm going to divide my background up because we're going to do some summer type colors. So I'm going to pull, and it doesn't matter how much space you have between each color. I'm going to tell you which color is going to be in each section. That way you can kind of decide how, um, what size you want there. If you want more of a certain color, you can make that size a bit bigger. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start from the top. And the top is going to be a bit more of like a bluish type purple. So I'm just pulling a line there to kind of show me how much blue and purple I'm going to have there. Here is going to be red so this section i'm going to be putting some red there i'm going to be putting some orange here in this section i'm going to be putting some yellow and then everything below i'm going to be putting a bit of like blue and it's going to go down into like a bit of a darker greenish blue so we're going to go ahead and get started now so since i'm already working with yellow I am going to go ahead and keep using yellow, but I want to pick up some white as well. So you can see I'm picking up both colors. And again, so everything above the first line is going to be purple. Then we have red, we have orange. So this here is going to be yellow. Now, if you want any extra colors, remember you can do as many lines as you want and you can do as many colors as you want because this painting is yours. So make it yours. So I'm going to fill this section in with yellow. And while I do that, I'm going to start to catch you all up. So we left off in June. It was literally the start of summer. Um, we did a beach babe painting. Thank you to everyone who did that um, painting, that tutorial with me. Um, and big shout out to everyone that has been painting with me, even in my absence, and posting it on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter, tagging me and sending them to me. I absolutely love seeing your videos and they definitely um, kept me encouraged. So thank you so, so much to everybody that sent me their paintings, sent me their cute little TikToks they made and everything else. I love them so much. So you're just going to get this entire space filled in with yellow. Um, but yeah, so we left off in June 
And in July, of course, my birthday is in July. So I was all set and ready to give you all some really great content um, and celebrate my birthday. And then I unfortunately experienced a loss and a very, very, very close friend's um, family and it, it took a toll on, on us and I did make a memorial video. So to everyone that um, watched the video, to everyone that commented and sent their condolences, thank you so, so much. I did share them with the family. So thank you so much. We appreciate all your love, support, and prayers. Um, and yeah, so July started off just a bit rocky. And the next color I'm going to get into, I'm going to move up into my orange. So this time on my plate, I'm going to do yellow, a little bit of red, and kind of mix those together. Now keep in mind, the more, um, the more red you use, the darker your orange will be. So you do want to make sure that you're starting out with just a little bit of red. And when I pick up my orange, I'm going to also add a little bit of white. And what I'm going to do, I am going to start at the top of the line and work my way down to the yellow. So, um, yeah, so July started off a little bit rocky. Um, but there were also some really great things that happened in July as well. Um, I moved into a new place. So, um, although the background looks the same um, because we still have our nice little backdrop, um, I am in a new place, so towards the end of July, I spent a lot of time, you know, packing and moving and unpacking, so that has been really, really great. Um, it's been a nice change. I love the new place. I um, was in an apartment before, and now I am in a townhouse. Um, so that's really nice. I love having um, a balcony. I love having my own garage now. So that's been really nice. Um, and as you're filling in your orange, when you start to get down to the yellow, make sure you overlap the yellow a little bit. Actually start to go into the yellow. About an inch or two inches, nothing more than that. But you do want to go down into that yellow area. Um, so yeah, so... July started off rocky, ended on um, a really great note, and some other things that happened towards the end of July, well, really the beginning of August, um, I started a new job. So I took on a part-time job with one of my favorite companies um, that I'm actually working with today. Blick Art Materials. So I normally shop at Blick Art Materials for all of my paint party supplies. Anytime I'm doing a tutorial, the paint that I use is from Blick Art Materials because they have really good like beginner friendly paints for when I'm working with paint party and I'm working with people that have never painted before. And also when I'm using this paint to create tutorials, I always suggest this and list it down in the description because it's super easy to work with. Um, I work with the Blick Acrylic brand of paint. Um, so yeah, so I normally shop at a, the local um, store in my neighborhood. And when I was going in there, the manager just, he knows uh, what I do. He knows that I have a business and that I also do tutorials. But he asked me if I wanted to, you know, go for a part-time position. And I said, hey, why not? So I've been there for um, over a month now. It'll be about, it'll be two months this weekend. So yeah, so that's been really, really good. It's been keeping me busy. Um, so it's had me away from you all for a little while, but we're gonna fix that today. Um, so the next thing that I'm working on, I'm gonna fill in this next section with just red. I'm not washing off my brush. I am just going right into my red and I'm starting from the yellow line again and working my way down. So yeah, so you know, um, things have been rocky but but great at the same time um a lot a lot of new things a lot of new new journey starting so that has been great and just again i can't thank you all enough for your continued support for continuing to paint with me um and, and just sending me your videos that really you know kept me encouraged and reminded me why i have to 
get back to YouTube. Why I have to get back to the videos and get back to you all. Um, so yeah, so it's it's been um, an interesting, uh, rocky, fun. Um, it's it's been it's been a time these last two months, but I am so glad to be back with you all. So again, as I'm filling in this red, I am making sure to overlap my orange. As you can see, I'm going down into my orange a bit. And remember, you don't want to go too far down into it, no more than about two inches. And then I'm going to work my way up to some purple. So for my purple, I am going to move over some of my red. I'm going to take a little bit of blue because the more blue you use, the darker it gets. And I don't want to start off super, super dark. So I am just adding a little bit of blue. I'm going to add a little more in there. And then I am going to go ahead and get that top section filled in. And again, I did not wash my brush. I've been leaving the brush dirty because it really helps your colors blend. And it doesn't really affect the painting because we're working from lighter to darker. Um, so it doesn't hurt it at all. So remember, start from the top and work your way down to your red. And as you're doing this part, you'll see like some of the colors blend out in your brush. That's exactly what you want. We want this to have a lot of different colors in it. So I'm just going to work my way down. And one thing you can also do if you want to add just a little bit of light in there, pick up a little bit of white just to add some extra details to your sky. And remember, overlap that red. Make sure you go into that red so that your colors blend seamlessly. You don't want to see any of those yellow lines we started with. Um, and you don't want to... Feel like your colors are like separate blocks you want them to blend really nicely so now again i'm not going to wash my brush this time i'm going to pick up blue and white just a little bit of white good amount of blue and the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and go right next to my yellow down here now i don't want to really try to like overlap as far as blend the blue up into the yellow i just want to make sure that i'm covering that yellow line and if your yellow paint is still wet which it probably is you will see that it turns green a little bit that's completely fine just keep adding that line so that you don't get anything up into the yellow and then you're going to go ahead and get this filled in with some blue and white and i'm only going uh about halfway down with this so i'm just continuously picking up blue and a little bit of white you don't want a whole lot of white because you don't want it to be like a really bright blue because again this is a sunset but if you do want um you know lighter water remember it's your painting it's completely up to you and the next thing i'm going to do don't wash your brush pick up some yellow pick up some blue and we want this to be a darker kind of teal almost at the bottom. So I'm not picking up a whole lot of yellow. I'm just picking up just a little bit and a really good amount of blue so that this starts to turn like a darker teal or a darker dark green. You don't want it to be like lime green. So only pick up a little bit of yellow and just let it blend. Let it do its thing. You don't have to mix it on the plate or anything like that. Just let it blend right on the canvas so that your water can have some nice variation going on. And you're going to take this all the way down to the bottom. So, yeah, so I figured, you know, after a two month hiatus and missing pretty much the summer season, I had to give you all one more summer painting before we get into the fall paintings so yeah so once you have your canvas completely covered all you want to do is give this some time to dry remember if you do not want to take like a long drying break you can always grab 
a blow dryer and blow dry it on a cool setting you know that it's dry when it's no longer shiny and it's gone to like more of a matte kind of um look but if it's still shiny it's still wet and we can't do anything while it's wet but if you are taking a break remember grab yourself a drink if you're 21 and up grab yourself an adult beverage maybe some pinot um and if you're not 21 and up just grab yourself some snacks some juice you'll be all right um and we'll start back together in just a few to everyone that painted with me, that sent me videos, pictures on Instagram, TikTok, I am so grateful. Thank you all so much. I so appreciate you. I would not be Picasso Baby without any of you all. And I love your work. Keep on painting with me. I'll see you all in many, many more tutorials. So now that our paintings are completely dry, we're gonna do a little bit of drawing. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm going back to my chalk. You wanna make sure that your painting is completely dry because if you try to draw on it while it's still wet, it will kind of smear and we don't want that after making these beautiful sunsets. So you wanna make sure it's dry and grab your chalk. Now I'm doing a glass of Pinot. So I do wanna make a U shape for my glass. I'm gonna try to place my glass right in the middle. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of make a mark where I feel like my middle point is and the bottom of my glass is going to hit the water. So I'm starting, I'm gonna make sure my the bottom of my glass hits the water. On one side, I'm gonna curve up and I'm not gonna to go too far past, um, past the red or if you, if I wouldn't go past the purple. If you wanna go further up, you definitely can. Don't go too far past the purple though. And then same thing on the other side. And it doesn't have to be like if you need to kind of redo your lines, you definitely can. Because remember, the great thing about the chalk is that you can wipe it away. That's also why you want to make sure your painting is dry before you start this step. Because if you try to wipe it away while it's still wet, it's going to smear. So once you've got your line how you want it, and I'm going to kind of go over this one more time. All you want to do is close up your glass. And from there, I do also want to pull my stem down. So for my stem, I am just curving the line down here and curving the line down here so that they meet up. And as always, you can kind of go back in and make sure that these lines are as straight as you want them. Same with the glass. You can go back in and make sure everything is exactly how you want it. Now that we got that in there, we're going to do a little bit of drawing on the inside, well, a little bit of painting on the inside. So we already have this sunset in the back, but we want to make it pretty tropical um, on the inside, like a little paradise. So what I'm going to do first, I am going to go in with a little bit of blue and a little bit of white, and I switch to like a medium round brush or a flat brush will work as well. You just wanna make sure it's more of a medium size. You don't want anything too big since you're gonna be doing details inside the cup. So what I wanna do first is I want to um, go, I want my yellow to still show, so I'm gonna go a little bit below my yellow, well, below my orange here, and I'm right on the yellow, and I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth very gently getting this field in and remember you do not want to go outside of your chalk lines whatsoever so if you feel like you need to um kind of outline your chalk lines you definitely can for example if you feel like you need to do that you definitely can because you want to make sure that you're staying inside the cup I'm just going back and forth here with some blue and white. I'm also going to add a little bit of red to my brush. And I'm not washing my brush. Just picking up a little bit of red because I want it to kind of blend out 
with some purple in the water as well since we already have that kind of darker green um, darker blue water in the bottom here I want to get a little bit of purple inside of the water in the cup and I'm not going down into the stem I'm stopping right at the bottom of the cup or the bottom of the U. Now, once you have that, what I am going to do, since I already have that sunset going, I am going to wash this brush off. I want to create a sun as well. So I'm going to wash this brush off. I am going to pick up some white and a little bit of yellow. And right in the middle here, I'm just going to create a circle. And I'm not like very harshly filling it in. I'm going to very lightly just move around in circles. Almost like I'm just swirling around. And you see that's kind of a bit of a lighter yellow. I'm going to keep doing that, but I'm going to pick up some white. And I'm going to start to move out. I'm going to pick up a little more white and keep gently going around. I'm going to leave it about there. Now, if you want yours to go around a little more, it's completely up to you. But I'm going to leave it about there, kind of keep it center. And I'm going to go back in with a little more yellow in the center of the sun. So now we have our cute little sun in there. I'm going to wash my brush again because we're going to add some more details. Now that we have that going on, I'm going to go ahead and add like some little, um, some little things like almost like islands and also um, palm trees. So I'm still using the medium sized round brush um, and I am going to go right above the water and I'm going to kind of create like a bit of a wavy line and then everything below that line you want to make sure that you get filled in with black. And remember you want to make sure that um, you are working inside of the cup. So inside of your chalk line. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. This one's going to be a little smaller. Now, while I give everything on the inside a minute to dry, I'm going to go ahead and get the um, stem of my glass filled in with black. So I'm underlining the U, and I'm going to get that completely filled in. Now, um, if you don't end up covering your chalk lines completely, that is okay. Um, because once it's completely dry, remember, you're going to be able to wipe the chalk away. So don't worry if you did not get it completely filled in. Oh, well, not completely filled in. You want to make sure it's completely filled in. But don't worry if you didn't, like, cover all of the outline, the chalk outline. If you didn't cover it completely, that's okay. We will wipe it away once it dries. Now, I'm going to go back on the inside. I'm going to do two things. Um, I am going to pull out... Uh, I'm going to pull out two different palm trees. You can pull out one, you can pull out two, or as many as you like. It's up to you. I am going to pull one right from this kind of um, little island right there, a little mountain. And with the palm trees, you just, if you start with a line, that's completely fine. But when you go down, you want to make sure that the line stays thinner at the top and gets a bit wider towards the bottom.
and then I'm going to pull one more up. This one is going to kind of come right next to the sun, and I'm actually going to pull it from the bottom of the glass. And I'm going to go back down. Remember to make the trunk a little bit wider. And if your water is still wet and some of it blends or some of it, you know, gets in the black, that's okay. Let that, let that happen. But what I'm going to do now to get my um, palm tree leaves, I'm going to switch to a bit of a smaller brush. So that brush has more of a smaller point. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of black. And from each tree, I am going to pull at least five leaves you can pull as many or as few as you want but i like to pull one from the very top first and i kind of just curve it i go back down to the top of the um tree the tree trunk and i pull two more on each side and whichever side i'm going on that's the side that i curve it to same thing over here i'm going to kind of pull one curving over at the top and then i'm going to pull two more from the top of the tree trunk and when you're doing this you want to make sure that all of your leaves come from the same point you shouldn't be pulling from off of the tree trunk only at the top so they should all come out of the same point if they don't come out of the same point then it's not going to give um, a real nice palm tree effect so you want to make sure that they come from the same point point. and what I'm going to do to really make it look like a palm tree I'm going to go underneath, and you have to do this to every leaf. Start from the inside. So start closest to the tree. Pull little lines down until you get to the end. Now, whichever way your leaf is curving over, that's how you're going to pull your lines down. So, for example, on this side, my leaf is curving that way. So I'm pulling my lines down, curving that way. And you can see a space in between the bottom of the lines, but the tops are really close together um, so that you can't see a gap in between this actual leaf and the lines that I'm pulling down from it. So again, I'm curving over. I'm gonna do it over here. And you just want to, you know, take your time with this part. Really watch how I do it and then repeat the step um, because you want to make sure that you get your palm trees how you want it. When you're adding on um, black paint on top of anything, it's really hard to um, cover it without having to pretty much redo everything. Um, so you want to make sure that you do this step very carefully after watching very closely. That way you don't have to fix any mistakes. Now that I have my paradise going on inside of my pino, I am going to go through and outline the cup so that you that we created, I'm just going through and outlining it completely. And I'm still using black. And you want to make sure that Everything you did inside of the cup, you want to make sure that you're getting right next to it. So like right next to your water um, and then like the trees and things, you don't have to be right next to them, but you want to make sure that that water looks like it's sitting right inside of the cup. And again, if you do not cover all of your chalk lines, as you can see, I have chalk lines that are not going to get covered. That's okay because all I am going to do is wipe it away at the end now one thing i am going to do and this is just a bit of an extra detail i am going to add a little bit of an opening by just very lightly pulling a line across and it doesn't have to be a complete line like the other ones like you see how i kind of let some space go in there that's completely fine i'm going to leave that just like that and while I'm still working with 
this small brush. I'm going to add a little bit of white to my brush. I'm not going to clean off the black. And I'm going to go through and kind of add some little highlights to the things inside. Wherever you add a highlight, though, with your white or yellow, whatever color you want that's in your sunset, you want to make sure that you are following the line or the curve that's already there. So if it curves like that, you want to make sure you follow that curve. You don't just want to add um, a highlight and let it do its own thing. It should follow whatever curve it's, are, it's on. So same thing for the foot of, or the stem of my glass. I'm going to make sure I'm following the curve wherever I put this at. And I want to do the same thing on the outline of the glass. But once you have all of that completely filled in, all you want to do is if you want to wipe it off right now, make sure that you blow dry it first. You do want to either let it dry for maybe 30 minutes to an hour before you wipe the chalk off or blow dry it completely before you wipe the chalk off. But the most important thing that you want to do before you are completely finished with your Pinot in Paradise is you want to sign your painting. So I am just going to pick up a little more white and make my initials right at the bottom there. And you are all finished with your very own Pinot in Paradise. Thank you all so, so much for painting with me today. Um, I have missed you all and I had a great time painting with you today after a two-month hiatus. Don't worry, I won't be going on any more hiatuses anytime soon. Uh, but as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and turn on those post notifications so that you do not miss the next tutorial. And if you have any suggestions of things that you want to paint with me, make sure you leave them in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next tutorial.